Hey, I'm John. Welcome to Edgestone Studios. Uh, so today I thought I would talk to you about the custom studio desk that I built and how you could build your own. And now this isn't going to be a tutorial on how to build your own because I built this desk some time ago, actually before I'd even built the studio. I actually wanted to know the size of the desk so I understood the size of the room that I was going to be um, needing at a minimum for the control room. Uh, and thankfully I had th that as part of the planning because it helped me know where I was going to be seated in the room and, and other aspects of the design. But it's simple enough to build a desk for your studio using some plywood and some basic carpentry. And what I did was I designed a desk on paper and then I built myself a little balsa model. So let's get to it. So this is basically uh, the desk in model format. When I first designed the desk, I drew it out and then I decided to make a little balsa wood 3D model, uh, partly because I had balsa wood kicking around and partly because I wanted to see if I liked this design. Originally I had the front sticking out really far and the idea behind it was this was a flat surface with audio uh, equipment on top that slid back and the keyboard stayed uh, where it was. But then later that became um, just a single layer without this top part and now has gone back to the situation where I have the keyboard uh, again but this time it can pull out and really the design is just a simple box on each side connected by a center section and you just use some three quarter inch ply for the construction you can put a door and a drawer like I did uh, and if you make each side 19 inches wide on the interior dimensions, you can attach rack rails and have rack units like I did, and you can make it to the height that you prefer. And when I was uh, working with the uh, console that I restored, I decided to put the um, sidecars on wheels and that actually became part of the desk now. The whole desk is movable because it's on wheels that lock at the front and keep it in place but then it's easy to get behind for the cabling. And uh, so this week I got to disassembling everything, taking all the um, gear off the center section anyways. I left all the cables connected but this was also an opportunity to disconnect the cables that had been uh, directly connected from the gear at the side which was the Super Gemini and the Tempest and the KO2 drum machines. So once I had that disconnected, I uh, took the center section to the garage and strapped some wood to it with uh, some clamps to uh, run my skill saw along. It was just a bit too big for this table saw. And this table saw was actually my grandfather's. He bought it in 1950 uh, and used it in his home uh, carpentry shop. He was a master carpenter um, until he passed away in 2002 and then I inherited it and it's been running for another 22 years since then. So amazing, uh, amazing um, cast iron uh, table saw with a custom base and custom top designed by my grandfather, it's amazing. And then I take some half inch ply. Uh, this is a two by four sheet and I'm gonna cut it into just under a foot because you can't quite get a foot once you run a blade through it and get uh, two pieces of ply, one for the keyboard, the MIDI keyboard, one for the keyboard, the computer keyboard, and accoutrements. So after a bit of light sanding on the front and back edges, I, I cut these to length, and I cut them both to the same width as the middle section of the desk, which proves to be a problem, of course, because the lower keyboard tray is going to be attached to uh, rolling shelf rails and they're going to take up a bit of space so I'm gonna to have to figure that out when I get back upstairs and then I cut the second board and these uh, pieces were holding up the center shelf and now have to be cut to the right length because it's the center shelf is shorter and I'll use the other two pieces to hold up the um, computer keyboard shelf so I decided to just put the middle shelf back where it used to be using these ledger boards that I'd cut. 
And once those were attached, I figured out how to get the ledger boards for the keyboard shelf, the computer keyboard shelf, to be the right height because it was going to sit on top of the other board. And then I measured the height of the MIDI keyboard. It was about four inches, so that was the spacing I was going to need. And I got the uh, shelf rails that I'd purchased and connected them, leveled them, and then tested it and found that, of course, it was too low and it was banging my knees because I didn't pre-plan the height. So now using my knees as a guide, I came up with the actual height I would need for the keyboard and worked backwards, took everything out, and started with uh, measuring up for the MIDI keyboard, making sure it sat so that I could get my knees underneath. I wanted it as low as possible so that the computer keyboard wasn't too high for when I was typing because ergonomics are important. You don't want to have a bad back from sitting and working at your desk too long. Uh, and once that was adjusted, I was able to measure the um, distance I needed for the ledger boards for the main shelf and get everything tested again, fit everything in, and then realize that the MIDI keyboard was hitting the main board. So I redid that. And then I always do um, this iron-on edging on uh, plywood because I like the look of it better than just having the raw ply. So that requires uh, ironing on the edging and using an X-Acto blade. And the trick is when you go to cut, do small cuts and figure out which direction causes the blade to move away from the board and then only go in that direction. That way you won't gouge the plywood itself. But once that's all trimmed up and nice and neat and tidy, I get my famous orange paint. We call it famous because it's called Construction Zone, this color from Home Depot. And we've used it throughout the house as an accent color. And it's really given a bit of a mid-century modern vibe to the spaces. I just did one coat and uh, the next day I did a light sanding on it with a very fine uh, grit paper just to make sure it was nice and smooth to the touch. And then I got everything assembled and all the cabling put back and my desk was finally the way I'd kind of originally intended it to be. So here's the completed desk, uh, at least the completed desk modifications. Uh, as you can see, it's basically a box on one side with a slightly angled front, and then a box on the other side with a slightly angled front, and then a shelf, uh, which is two part. It's a three quarter inch um, ply, uh, walnut and then just some half inch ply I think it's just birch or whatever the cheap ply is um, that I've painted and put the edging on and I did the same for the keyboard tray which is now just on one of these rollable keyboard trays so this is at the right level for me to play at the same time this keyboard isn't too high it's a little bit higher than I like I tend to have to sit up a bit taller when using it so that's that's not bad it works okay so now that the room is back together i'm excited it's simpler it's a little bit easier to use i've got my wall of 80 cents for sounds and i've got my jam station over here and i'm looking forward to doing something with that probably into the new year we'll see you soon thanks for watching